Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part two of my static methods tutorial. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu, and then Java OOP tutorials. Scroll all the way down here to Static Methods Part 2. In this tutorial, I will use a mix and match of static and non-static methods to complete the results of the all-important coin flipping study. Here's a quick refresher from my introduction to the static modifier tutorial. Suppose we just won a multi-million dollar grant for a really important government study to determine if there is really a 50-50 chance that a coin will land on either heads or tails. The specs for the grant require a minimum of 1 million flips of a coin to be performed. The best approach will be to hire a bunch of people to flip coins and press either heads button or tails button depending on the result of the flip. We'll need a high-tech workstation, something like table, chairs, coin, heads button, tails button, for every worker that will connect to a central computer that will tally two competing values, heads and tails. Okay, let's come down here and highlight some code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'll move the browser off screen here. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking, selecting new, and shortcut. CMD, next, and finish. Okay, first thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash to change directories. I'm going to use the MD command to make a Java folder here. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory called uh, Important Study. Okay, let's change directories to the Important Study folder, and I'm going to notepad um, Important Study Java. ImportantStudy.java is going to be the name of my source code file. I'm going to have a bunch of classes inside of it, though, today. All right, so uh, let's go up to File, Save This. We'll come down here at the bottom. So I got this class running total <coughs> with two static um, class variables, heads and tails. All right. Now, there's only one. Remember, a class variable, there can only be one copy of it. So through all these various different classes that uh, basically end up, you know, incrementing this, there's only one copy. So that's why I call my class running total, because this kind of does effectively work as a running total. Okay, let's come back up to the top here. So I am importing um, from the Java package and then the util sub package and then the random class. I'm importing that here, right? Because I'm going to use the the random class to generate some uh, random either zero or one depending on, on whatever it decides to do here. So in the important study class I've got the main method entry point. So now only three people answer my Craigslist ad, Bob, Mary, and Larry. So uh, they put in a hard day at the office with the following results there. So the first thing we're going to do is we are def we're going to come down here to class Bob and I have a static method Bob's day here, right? And that method just basically invokes the work hard method from the skills class, right? Which is another static method. And we come down here to skills and basically work hard, which is a static method here, receives a number of flips integer parameter. <clears throat> and then basically we just have a simple for loop that loops the number of flips. And if flip coin and you'll notice, see, this is a direct call to another <coughs> static method up here. Let me get some water real quick. Okay, so the flip coin method <coughs> will uh, basically create a new random object type and made a, make a reference variable random number and set that equal to a new reference of a random instance, right? And the random class up here is, is part of the Java utils, the utilities thing there. So now it has this method called nextInt, right? And nextInt, you can pass it a parameter of two. 
So basically, since the job is a zero index thing there, it'll either return a zero or a one, right? Two values is the max we want on there. So the two argument will set the return range of either zero or one. Okay, so that's the whole purpose of this particular method, flip coin right here, is to return back a zero or a one. And it's static, right? So inside of this static method, we can directly call it by just um, putting flip coin right here. So if it equals zero, we'll go ahead and use the, we'll directly add one to the heads class variable inside of the running total class, right? Using the running total dot and then class variable syntax there. Um, so if it's if it's not zero, it's got to be one, so we'll just go ahead and add one to the tails there, right? Okay, so that is what, uh, what we'll do here. So in Bob, I have a static void method, Bob's day, and I'm going to be directly um, invoking the work card method and passing it 300,000, right? We want to loop 300,000 times for Bob, and I'm using the skills.work card directly um, invoking that using the the class name skills, right? And then the dot operator to invoke a static method. So a static method directly called from a static method is what we've got in Bob's class. Okay, so on the next line down, I've got, um, I've got this commented out, right? Larry dot Larry's day. Now down here in Larry, you notice I don't have a static modifier in front of the void, whereas Bob up here I do, right? So we cannot say Larry.Larry's day. No, we cannot directly call a non-static method from a static method. Now remember main menu, or the main method up here is a static method, so we cannot do that, okay? Cannot call a non-static method from a static method. Okay, and then basically we'll be doing the same thing. I'm, I've, I'm in a non-static method, right? And I can still use the syntax in a non-static method to directly invoke a static method. So a static method directly called from a non-static method. So you can see it's, it only works one way. A non-static method can directly invoke a static method, but a static method cannot call a non-static method from a, you know, so directly call a non-static method. So we have to call by reference. So I have to say use the new operator to create a reference of the Larry ob, uh, Larry class into a Larry object, right? And then invoke Larry's day using the dot operator there. So we can only call a, a non-static method from a static method using a reference, okay? And so down here in Mary as well, that's another non-static one right there. Okay, so we have to use the new operator to create a reference to invoke Mary's day. Um, Porter method right here. Now you'll notice I went ahead and extended skills, right? So basically skills is a super class of Mary is a subclass. So we basically inherited all these, right? So we can, we don't even have to put like skills dot work hard, right? Like we did up here, we can just plain old use work hard. So this is a static method directly called from a non-static method using inheritance. So that's just basically kind of the um, you know, mix and match of static stuff and non-static stuff. So let's go ahead and run this thing here and let's save this and let's clear our screen, Java C to compile it and Java to invoke, to run the virtual Java virtual machine and we want to invoke the important study class. Okay, so we get drumroll dot 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 and our results are heads total 500,424, tails total 499,576. I'm calling it close enough for government work. Let's grab a bite to eat. Okay, I'm going to hit the up arrow again and run it again, right? And we get a little different results there, right? Now it's kind of flipped the other way, and, and we can hit it, keep hitting the up arrow and keep running this, and we're going to get, uh, you know, fairly close results there. So, but uh, anyway, that's how that basically works there. Come down here to the print line to explain that. Just a simple string literal displayed there. Now the heads total, I'm displaying a string literal, and then I'm using the direct access syntax for running total, right, dot heads to get that value. And then for tails, I'm actually using a new reference um, to a running total instance, 
and then using that reference to directly access the tails there. So you can do it either way. So that's just important to note that you can directly access the static um, a class variable or you can use a reference to the class to access the static uh, variable. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, get rid of that, and just leave you with some final thoughts here. So, uh, learning how to make calls between static and non-static methods is a skill that will come in quite handy. Uh, understanding that there is exactly one copy of a class variable is critical, especially when you consider that a class variable can be accessed by a reference to the class it resides in. The static keyword applied to a variable is the only difference in syntax between an instance variable and a class variable. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.